you came up with the name. We both came up with the name, which is, um, the third eye is the chakra of intuition. It's the chakra of psychic ability. Um, we all have a third eye. We all have intuition. Sometimes it comes off as, <clears throat> you know, just a deja vu or a spidey sense, like something is different. Um, mother's intuition, that's a great one, right? Um, and a lot of the magical workings that are done, the foundation is to develop your third is to develop your third eye and your psychic abilities. This is a big part of it. And it's not just so that you can, you know, read cards for other people. It is your way of navigating through the mystic and the unknown. And it's a it's imperative to have those developments so that you can say, okay, this might not be right. This might be, this feels good. Um, it's listening to your inner self and it's connecting with your higher self. Um, so that seemed, that's kind of how it came about is what are we trying to do? What was the objective for the candles? And that is to provide magical workings and tools so that other people, so that people can develop and um, become better. I started my first job was a soap factory in um, New Jersey, in a just like historic little like village, right? It was colonial. And this, the lady taught me how to make soap and candles. Um, and I kind of tucked it away, you know, and it was also, I was like 13 at the time. So it was, you know, under the table and, you know, um, but, it was when I actually, I did my first gig because of a connection through that shop. I was, that was my first professional reading because I read and I had my deck of 10 and I, my first job was at 13 and I was reading for a Halloween party. Um, so fast forward, I had all these skills and I was reading at a shop um, in Chanted Earth in Dunedin and the owner was like, she wasn't happy with her spell candles. She wasn't happy with it. And I was like, okay, I could probably fix that. So we had a conversation and her intent was for me to make handcrafted goods and supply them for the shop. I took it a little serious and um, I formed a company. So instead of just like, oh, let's try this out. I was like, no, 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 we're just gonna. So I went and got my LLC, I got my insurance, I got all the equipment. If I was gonna do it, I was going to do it. Um, so she tried them. Um, one of the things that's great about the candles is those initial recipes that we still use. We formulated them in the backyard of this metaphysical shop. It's the same metaphysical shop where we met. Um, and everybody, all the practitioners had inputs and we tweaked it together as a group. Like, okay, well let's, this looks good. Like this recipe looks good, but what if we did this? And the first two or three batches of candles was just us burning them and getting the feedback and checking to make sure that things were working correctly. And so it was a community effort, which is fantastic because now this store, the people that are coming in, they're like, this isn't just a retail shop. This is a community. That was always part of the model. It was a, a process, you know, she was always candle magic and candle magic based. I'm a little bit more eclectic and have different vari variations and, and variances of it, but it was something that we both did. But this, that was her baby that, that started and just, it kept growing. And then every, you know, step of the way, okay, you know, there's a new venture, there's a new growth, there's a new opportunity. And yeah, it was scary. And there's a lot of times that, you know, she didn't really want to go ahead and take the jump, but it was just, you know, just do it. If you're going to do it, just do it right. So, on the candles that were on the market prior to Third Eye, they always had to be doctored. And, mm -hmm. you know, it's the same thing here. I don't discourage somebody from putting their own um, energy into their workings because ultimately it's theirs. But I was tired of getting candles on the market. And this was kind of the sentiment that was reflected with that shop owner that, that kind of was jump started um, that I had to buy the candle. It was like eight. $10 and then I had to get all these herbs and all these oils and I'm like 40, 50, 60 dollars into a candle, which sounds counterintuitive if it's like, I don't know, for money magic, right? Like you just spent $60 to bring in um, 
wealth. And so that's how this kind of worked is because I looked at it like, okay, what am I missing as a practitioner? What am I, what would I like to see had happened? And that's why the candles are done the way they are with the herbs on top and it's already, the colors are already selected. It's that full package that people can then make their own without being so, having such an investment. The first thing that you look at is the, all the herbs that we choose, they all have a energetic correspondence, right? So you use allspice as an amplification and also to bring in prosperity. You also have chamomile, um, ginger. All of these have different aspects that you use when you are traditionally dressing a candle or adding herbs to the mix, right? Um, so those recipes, and then also there's the oils, there's the scents, there's the essential oils for the magical essence. All of those have different energetic correspondence. So the recipe is just that. It is what are we putting in? to bring in what aspects, and then we amplify it because we create a sacred space. So this is actually ritually, these are created in a ritual fashion. Um, we set up our sacred space and then we only do them according to the corresponding days of the week and then the lunar cycles that also add an amplification to that magic. Um, there are different sets of rules, not rules, but what, what's the word? What's another word for correspondence? Because I think that that's where yeah. you kind of have to so boil it down. It's, this is all a form of sympathetic magic. Correct. So you're using things that symbolize what it is that you're wanting to bring in. So you're going to pick green for prosperity or, or nature or healing. And then you're going to pick out your herbs to go, go along with that that are based upon those same properties. So you match like with like, and you start building and, and formulating it up. Uh, so it's kind of like building a cake. You know, you're gonna have your base. So the cake base itself, that's gonna be the candle. And then the icing and the fruit and everything else that you layer on top of it, that's everything else that you're picking. Correct. And doing it in you know a proper fashion within a sacred cleanse space, because the, like, the way that we talk about it is doing things in a proper fashion to where you're getting the outcomes that you want and making sure that you're not dragging other things in. So it's not throwing the proverbial hand grenade into a problem, it's taking an arrow and shooting the one object that you're wanting. And then in terms of the lunar cycles and the days of the week, there are certain sets, there's certain days that are good for different types of magic and following that model that's how those candles are created you want to do prosperity thursdays are great um you want to do them during a waxing moon because that is when you are bringing stuff in and it's coming into a full it's coming into fruition for banishment and like the clean sweep candle that would be that's something that you would do on a waning moon because that's when it, that is the banishing aspect of the lunar cycle. As far as the correspondences and things like that to like the property value, like metaphysical properties, um, you are gonna have a different oil base that has different connections because if you look at a cultural belief system, like olives have a certain property to them, birch, oak, and all these things. So the oils that you would get from the plants would carry on a, you know, a stronger form of that. So it's like a concentration of that property. Well, see, in sympathetic magic, it's one of the oldest forms of magic. It's been around since man, since man. But if you have to think about it in ancient cultures, right? Like we are not, we couldn't, they couldn't just click a mouse and get anything they want across no. the globe. Um, they were regionalized and they had to work with what they had available in their area. So through assignment and looking at what's in their area, this is how this kind of develops culturally is that they have certain herbs and certain things that they work with. And it's interesting because they, a lot of times correspond with what has now been validated as medicinal properties. So, so like sage is a good one. So everyone knows sage. Everyone thinks, oh, well, sage is good for cleansing out negativity. I got something bad going in my home. So I'm going to grab some, some sage. I'm going to run through and I'm going to cleanse everything out. But 
And you know, this has been something that's been done for centuries. It's not like a new idea. Oh, I need to cleanse out the property. And scientifically there was studies done and it proved that uh, white sage, the smoke actually cleansed out bacteria and mold and things in the air, which was actually cleansing out the, out the area. So it wasn't like a far-fetched thing that our ancestors and people that were, you know, back before all this technology, you know, they knew. Yeah. And, that, and that's the other part of it too, is that, you know, this, the whole practice of smudging, clearing out his space, right? Um, most people think of white sage. White sage is indigenous to Western United States and Western, the wet, where it's dry. And um, that's where that naturally grows. But they were doing the same practices over in Italy using rosemary, because that is what the plant, that's the plant that was indigenous to their local region. Yeah. So you have these cultures that they don't have, they, there's no telephones, there's no way to connect, but they're all simultaneously doing similar practices and passing that verbal folklore down for generations to generations. And I find that, that that's very interesting because that means that there's something that is propelling and assigning that this is what you do for certain things. And it's up to the interpretation. It's the same idea with, you know, religion, right? Like you look at holy texts, there are general themes and threads that every, that all of the, all, all of them talk about, um, just using a different interpretation and lens. No. It depends on where you're at, right? So there is, in the East and in, in Asian countries. Chinese medicine using herbs is something that has been around for centuries and it's still practiced today. And it has great reverence and great, um, it's a real thing. But then you translate that over to the West and the West has always now become, there's a pill for that. There's a medical cure that's something that they've established as concrete, which is just basically accredited by a body made by man. It, I see, it's a cultural difference, really, because if you look at, you know, like here in the United States, a lot of things are the pharmaceutical companies, big, you know, the big corporations, it's those, it's instant gratification because it's all technology based, it's, yeah. things are fast. And the way that people are brought up, they're told that there's no monster under the bed, there's no such thing as ghosts, and all this other stuff there and they become detached from that so it's like a you know turning off switches so as you get older you're just desensitized to it and you know that stuff's not there and it's a gradual programming of what is considered truth right like yeah. my truth and someone else's truth are completely can be completely different based off of the exposure and what you've been programmed since you were little to believe like it's it's interesting, it's the same idea that, you know, two people could go to a doctor, right? They're overweight, they have cholesterol issues. The doctor looks at them mm -hmm. and goes, okay, well, your levels are high. I'm gonna need you to exercise 30 minutes a day, go on a low fat diet, and um, we're gonna check up in three months. The person that is like, okay, this is difficult, this is a challenge, this is something that I have to improve upon, they're gonna go, that's great sound advice. The person that comes in that was expecting a cholesterol pill goes, he has no idea what he's talking about. It's, it's, the, it's that perspe perspective. And so a lot of times, like I've had, I actually have a medical background. Um, I was a pharmacy tech. And there were a lot of doctors that were like, okay, this is, there's things that you can do to help heal yourself. And they would get so much pushback because we're accustomed somehow, especially in America, that everything has to be that instant gratification. There has to be an instant fix. We can buy that. You can't buy it. You have to apply the work and the energy and magic is no different. You apply the work and the energy and it is exactly that, a practice. Most of the time you learn something because you messed something up and you were just willing to try and now you have to fix it. Yeah, and you know, it. there is an awakening, there is a big climb within the culture now that they're coming into this and coming up, coming up. but at the same exact time as they are coming into it, they're getting bad advice. 
and they're co coming in going, oh, well, I need this or I need that because I saw this on a TikTok video. So they go and they grab a piece of Olduvai and they throw it in, in their wallet thinking that's going to bring in prosperity. And it's like, that's not how that works. There's work, there's things you have to do to it. Just because you have some bay leaf sitting on your table doesn't mean that it's gonna fix your, fix your problems and bring those, those things in. Like you actually have to take these objects and manipulate them to bring in those aspects. Yeah, it's kind of the idea you buy an Ikea bookshelf and you buy a hammer and some nails and you leave it in the box and you never do anything with it and then you wanna come back and say, okay, the bookshelf's built. It doesn't quite work that way. There is some kind of kinetic energy. There's some kind of movement, some kind of action that has to happen. And these tools allow you to do so, but you still have to put in the work and you still have to do something in order for that to manifest. Magic is no different. There are tools and there's a way to harness energy, but that's it. You still have to do the work. Um, when I um, started this place, I didn't really intend to be a metaphysical shop owner. That wasn't, I wanted to wholesale my candles to other metaphysical shops and go off on, go, go off in my car and off I go, right? <laughs> um, but there was an observation and a need for working knowledge. Um, this is what you would categorize as different types of metaphysical shops. You have a crystal shop, you have some that are more gift shop. There's not a lot of practitioner shops like people that actually want to practice. A lot of the shops hold classes, but it's not um, an environment that where you're immersed in that aspect of manifestation. And so when I did this, I not only looked at what I wanted as a practitioner, which is how the candle bar, which I'm sure we'll discuss later, came to vision, um, but I also found the most qualified practitioners I could. My mentors, people that have had 50 plus years in, in experience in this, to come in as my readers, as people available, so that when people come in, they're not just listening to me or my husband as a perspective, they're listening to other practitioners and we will vary in, do, in viewpoints, that is okay. But it allows the person that's trying to learn to get different perspectives and try and be able to try out different things to figure out what works for them. Because it never is a, it's not a set model. It's not mm -hmm. a, it's not something you can just put into a box and that this is what it is. The candle bar, and we have a spell bar that's gonna be coming up too, but it's a way that you can come in and with help and guidance, pick out your candles, your herbs, your oils, and then we'll help guide you through. So people that are like she was saying, that are interested, that don't know anything, can come in, they can pick out their stuff, and then get the instruction on how to put the things together so they can walk out of here with their very own, you know, intention candle or spell candle, whatever you want to call it. Mm -hmm. um, we're going to be able to do our mojo bags or charm bags, whatever, you know, however you connect with that. Uh, witch bottles, uh, what else were you thinking? Ritual baths. Ritual mm -hmm. baths. So all those things, and then you'll get that help and guidance. And then if you have, you know, have no idea, then we kind of do that whole entire tap. We go in and start doing the intuitive pull of what is needed to accomplish the goal. Or are you really sure this is what you want? Because what you're asking for may not be the best choice. Exactly. It's kind of flushing those ideas out. And um, and that's something that we kind of all struggle with at some point and we, we can continue to struggle with. Um, where, you know, um, you say it's very general. You have to be very, sometimes you have to be very specific with the universe of what you want. Um, I, we just had an example of something that happened in the shop where um, I was like, I want to advance my skills as a practitioner because it's a constant journey. You're always learning, right? And then this incident happened and then I thought, and I was like, maybe I should have been more specific. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's, it's, it's one of those things, but it's a feel and it's a trial and error. And, that's, and yeah. we want to create a space and an environment where it's okay. There, it's okay to ask questions. No, no, the only question that's silly is the question that goes, on, that goes unasked. And it's okay to a degree to mess up. And it's mm. okay to go through the process because that's how you get better. And if you stumble or fall or need some assistance, we have an eclectic, very experienced group of individuals that can guide you through that. If you're wanting to do something, 
when you start thinking about it, that's when the process has started. You've started to put your energy into that movement to what you're wanting to bring in. And then as you're picking out the candle co correspondence, that's adding it in. So it's adding more and more layers to it. So it's the difference between grabbing a green candle for prosperity and lighting it. You'll find $50, but then you lose something. There's a karmic and there's an energy jet, uh, energetic debt that you have to pay back. So if you take the time and you engrave and put your runes and symbols into it, you pick out your oils and you anoint it and you dress it down with the herbs, you've now put more of your energy into it. So you can light that prosperity candle and find the $50, but not have anything to, to pay back because you've put your energy and working into it. And, you know, finding the specifics and being kind of, these are the aspects that I'm looking for. Kind of like, you know, like we discussed that, you know, hand grenade. You don't want to toss it out there for it because you'll get that one thing, but all the bull crap that goes around it. You want to get just the thing that you want, so it's shooting the arrow to get your goal. And it's kind of the idea too, is that, you know, it's um, magic in general. It's not just an external process. It's not um, pulling from a deity or the universe and um, other external factors to manifest desire. It's energy manipulation, but we also, we have all the energy and source within our within ourselves. It's just tapping into that and being able to harness that for something where we're for for an objective or a goal, um, and I think that that's something that's missed is that we are, it's it's kind of this mysticism that everything's external and you're tapping in or finding something that's that's beyond you, and as you go through the process and you start to meditate and you start to eat your vegetables and work your magic whatever however that manifests for you you realize that you are you are the magic it's not something that happens to you it's something that you become